Today's event will cover the full year 22 report uh, released this Monday. Uh, headlines, strategy, uh, new strategy is, is really seems to work. Uh, and you and you kept your 23 raised uh, guidance from, from, from January. And, and of course, a lot of more details we get in the full year report. So I think we will also dig into that. As always, it's possible to ask questions uh, in the box down below, do it through the presentation, but we will primarily take the, uh, the answers in the end. But uh, for now, yes, but I think I will hand the call over to you. Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, welcome everybody to this presentation of our annual report and audited and finalized 2022 results. I'm Jesper Johansen and I'm the CEO of Audio. I'm here with Jesper Hugel, our CFO. So could you take the next slide, Michael? So just before we start, just 20 seconds as usual on this important information slide. Okay, let's get going. So, um, now the numbers and the results uh, are as we presented in the Q4 trading update in January. So um, uh, these numbers should not come as a surprise uh, to any of you. We will, uh, however, uh, uh, increase the level of details uh, a little, a little bit. Um, so hopefully we can give you a little more insight on our numbers uh, in this presentation. Um, especially Jesper will uh, will go through some of the of the more detailed uh, information here. As I mentioned in our Q4 update, um, uh, 2022 was an extraordinary year for Audio. 22 was the year where we established ourselves as a European market leader for white label online ordering solutions for takeaway restaurants. It's a position that we have defended and expanded uh, during the second half of 22. And this number one position was obviously created through the merger between Audio and AppSmart in the summer of 22. And I'm very proud. Uh, of what we've accomplished in the last nine months. And I do think that we are ahead of the merger plan we had originally. And I do think that we've proven that we have the capabilities to merge and integrate companies, which of course is crucial as we have an active M&A strategy. We raised our guidance twice since the merger was announced. Um, and uh, the ARR uh, that we showed today and that we showed in Q4 guide, uh, uh, quarterly update, uh, is actually higher than the than the uh, uh, October uh, guidance that we released, uh, AR of 212 million, uh, comparing to an original guidance of between 175 to 190, uh, raised twice, uh, latest in October, 285 to 200. The, two, the 22 uh, AR of 212 million translates into a 23 growth uh, compared to the fully consolidated, so including AppSmart, um, ARR one year ago. In addition, we have been profitable for six consecutive months since July 22, a very important milestone for us that we will continue to focus on. And lastly, we are now almost 300 dedicated restaurant liberators ready to take on 23. I'm tremendously proud and grateful for what our entire team has delivered in 22 in general, and is specifically in, um, in the second half of 22. Next slide, please, Michael. So just a reminder, and, and I've shown this, this, this slide a couple of times, uh, actually every time we present, and, but it is very important uh, that we remind ourselves what this is all about, um, because we liberate restaurants. Uh, basically, 90% of the orders of an average independent restaurant uh, come from the current customers, and uh, the restaurant needs to own that, uh, and we help that in a cost-efficient manner. This has been our value proposition from day one. It's never been more important. It's pretty simple. Uh, if if these restaurants do not have a white label solution, they will die. Next slide, please. And next slide. Now this is important. Um, we are talking a lot about European market, lead, market leadership uh, with a solid, strong uh, um, number one position in, in, in the two biggest countries, uh, UK and Germany. And it's not just for fun because it's very important uh, as, a, as an important part of our path to profitability uh, that I will, I will come a little more into, into that uh, later. But, but first of all, as market leader, 
our muscle to communicate our value proposition and, and engage with restaurants are very, very big. And second of all, size matters on costs. Uh, we can provide our offering more cost efficiently because of size. Uh, I'll get back to that in just two slides. Next slide, please, man. Um, so 23 percent growth, as I, as I mentioned, above guidance and profitable in all months since the merger. So very, very strong numbers um, uh, during the second half of 22. Next slide, please. So my most important and maybe a, a little new slides uh, that, that we have this time is actually a, a little a little more information about our path to profitability uh, because profitability is obviously key for us. It's, impo it's important for everybody and has been uh, increasingly important over the last 12 months. Um, it has always been an important strategic objective for us. Um, so as mentioned, we were EBDA profitable all six months in the second half of 22. Uh, generating 5.1 million, and this compared to an EBDA loss of 6 million in uh, in the first half of 22. So next slide, Michael. So taking just a, a, a deeper look of, of profitability, here you see our EBDA margin since 21. Uh, now we were coming from around a margin of around zero in 21 during COVID. Uh, we uh, invested heavily in the first half of 22, building a relatively large machine. Um, which transformed into a margin loss of 12% for the first half of 22. This fundamentally changed during the second half where we realized an EBDA margin of around 5%. Um, and for 23, we expect an EBDA margin of 4 to 7%. And we are confident and expect uh, that we in the coming years can drive this margin improvement even further. And, and why is this? Basically due to three uh, important factors. So what drives our profitability? Local market leadership, as as I just mentioned uh, uh, earlier, it gives us a platform to deliver strong products at scale, uh, much more uh, cost efficient. Economies of scale. So as we are getting better, bigger, we do see cost advantages. Uh, the audio machine uh, is, is built for more activity, which basically means that uh, added activity increases profitability. And the best example of, of this is obviously the, the, the merger that we did with AppSmart which has driven a big part of the profitability expansion from first half to second half of, of 22. And finally, uh, M&A. As you all know, we have a very active M&A strategy and we can see that adding co companies to our platform drives economies of scale even further. So the cost efficiency and cost optimization, we can do uh, adding um, uh, more uh, companies to, uh, to our company is, is quite high. So we are very confident that our EBDA margin will improve over the coming years, and and for twenty three we have a forty seven percent level. Next slide, please. So over to you, Jesper, uh, who will take us through the twenty two numbers uh, in more details. Thank you, Jesper. Uh, please let me give you the highlights of our twenty twenty two performance and a little bit insight into our twenty twenty three guidance. So next slide, please, Mike. So our December 2022 GMV reached 2.2 billion, uh, exceeding our high guidance by 27 million uh, DKK. Our annual recurring revenue in December 2022 reached 212 million DKK, also exceeding our high guidance. Our 2022 net revenue reached 149 million and thereby landed in the middle of our guidance range. And finally, our EBDA ended at a loss of 1 million, also within our guidance range. Uh, again, as Jesper has alluded to, uh, strong AR performance, uh, profitability in second half, and uh, we, uh, the merger actually pays up, pays up off now with uh, an integration on track and even ahead on uh, several uh, parameters. So next slide, please. So for our 2023 guidance, uh, it's basically maintained since our Q4 update in, given in January. So um, so for GMV, between 2.3 and 2.5 billion DKK, an annual recurring revenue December 2023 between 220 and 235 million, a net revenue guidance between 195 to 210 million, and EBDA between 10 and 15 million positive. Next slide, please. So taking a closer look into our ARR composition of December 2022, our ARR is divided into a usage-based subscription part representing 64% and 
which is very characteristic for the audio north ARR, and now including a larger share of fixed subscription representing 36%. 2021 comparison was audio standalone, a split between 81 on usage base and 19% fixed subscriptions. So together with the uh, country split, split that you see on, on the right part of this slide, uh, overall, we believe that this strengthened the health of our ARR composition. And in addition to the ARR country split composition, which, which basically gives us more commercial flexibility and, um, and we can basically select uh, where we put in the efforts. Next slide, please. So here you see the, um, the half year growth uh, divided with the existing customers, new customers and churns for each uh, half year. So what you see is 23% growth that we uh, alluded to uh, in the annual report as well from December 21 to December 22. So <clears throat> looking at this consolidated December to December AR development, we grew by the 23% mentioned and existing customers grew by 29%. New customers represent the growth of 21%. And we have an average ARR churn of 8.8%. Basically, we are very proud of the growth in both existing and new customers. While the churn rate is considered acceptable in the current market situation, and as we have a active churn policy uh, within uh, Auto Euro. Next slide, please. So um, we alluded a little bit to, uh, to to the EBDA of a loss of one million. So that brings. In the, in the annual report, you will see a net loss of 48 million. So having a look at this um, from our core EBDA, ending at just under 1 million negative, we have had extraordinary costs of 15 million DKK related to the AppSmart transactions. These costs are only transaction costs as all integration costs has been absorbed in the ordinary cost and therefore included in our core EBDA due to the capitalization of acquired intangible assets. We have had higher depreciation than previous years. For 2022, the total depreciations amounted to 32 million, whereof the majority relates to the acquired assets. Finally, we have had net financial expenses and tax on loss leveling out to zero, bringing our net loss to 48 million. So basically what, what we are trying to show here is that the core EBDA that we guide upon and the core EBDA that we delivered in 2022 uh, is the 1 million and uh, all extraordinary costs that we consider transaction cost and then obviously the depreciation which in which majority of the depreciation is related to the acquisition of uh, AppSmart. Next slide, please. So now let's take a closer look into our asset and the development since December 21. So the main changes to our asset is obviously the direct impact from the merger with AppSmart. Our acquired intangible asset adds by December 2022, a total of 225 million to our total assets, with 130 on intangible assets and 95 on goodwill. Trade receivables increased by 10 million, also mainly related to AppSmart and that now Audio is a significantly larger company than we was one year ago. Final movements bring us to the development of our capital base, which has increased by 15 million compared to 2021. The key message from our side on our capital base is that we have sufficient funds to facilitate our plans. And as Jesper has described, that we work hard every day to reach profitability and consistent positive cash flows. So basically, the balance sheet development, the cost we just re uh, we referred to in our EBITDA bridge on depreciation relates mainly to, to the increase that we see here in our total asset base. And on the other side, the capital base, what we want to show you here is basically that we do have sufficient funds and that we, with the message that Jesper gave on profitability, we, um, we are certain and we work every day very hard to ensure that we are profitable, not only from an EBDA perspective, but definitely also from a cash flow perspective, which is uh, what we work on every day. So that was the final comments from, uh, from my side. Now over to you for a final remark, Jesper. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just before we start the Q and A session, so um, so um, a strong twenty two, uh, a proven merger with AppSmart, uh, showing profitability, and um, a fairly optimistic view on on our 
ability to to increase uh, profits uh, going further. Um, and then obviously there is a lot of technicalities uh, between our our uh, EBDA guidance, which is our basically our, our operational uh, leave, uh, goal, and the, the the accounting part that you just described here. Um, but uh, we are confident uh, on the business. Um, I think that was it. So yeah, Michael, uh, please. Uh, open yeah, the let's take some. Uh... Let's take some question, a starting question. Uh, Just Eat uh, recently announced big layoffs in, in the UK. Are you, are you worried about the UK market or was there something else behind that agenda? Was it cost focused by them or, you know, a little bit on the, on the market in UK, which is one of your big ones? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, I think I, I, I wrote the article as well um, and obviously cannot speculate a comment on 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 why they're why they're doing what they are as i understand it this was mainly i mean you have to remember uh, as i understand the, the way just eat is 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 handling that delivery part they started invested investing quite heavily in that a couple of years ago by actually hiring uh, the um uh, the delivery people uh, by themselves so not this model where 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 the the delivery function is is basically self employed um, and as part of, I understand, uh, the, the, the termination of, of a lot of these was actually that then they should be rehired, but as self-employed. So the, the model that Vault, uh, uh, Deliveroo and some of the other platforms are using, which is obviously cheaper, but there are some labor issues in that. So so um, that's why I, how I understand it. But I think that question is probably better suited at at, uh, at Just Eat's uh, Q&A session, whenever that is. Now, in terms of... <laughs> In, in terms of, of the, uh, the UK market, uh, you, the UK market has been and is a super difficult market. Uh, um, and, and we have talked about that, uh, I think, basically for the last uh, three or four sessions we've had here. And it is, it is a struggling market. Luckily, we have a number one position. We have to be very focused and we are uh, doing fine over there. We are taking, we are taking um, a market share. But uh, uh, if you look at our uh, of, of the portal players, you do see a falling a number of orders, um, uh, which is probably due to high inflation, end users uh, having difficulties uh, and a lot of close downs. Um, a part of the of the churn rate that we see, uh, so so the churns on MRR in in UK is also bigger than the rest of the of of, uh, of our markets. Um, it's it's a condition that we have to work through because uh, again uh, we are in the world to liberate restaurants and we want to make money along the lines obviously but 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 as at the, the UK market is still the biggest market in Europe and we still want to own that market and be number one so from a strategic point of view it's very important for us to stay over there and keep uh, keep investing in it and we are doing that um, luckily as yes by alluded to we we with the app app um, smart merger now is is much more balanced in terms of of geography so 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 the uk market is not as big as it was in the old audio actually when we listed the company that was obviously up to you know including Ireland, uh, 90 percent of the business and, and and now i think that the uk alone is how much in the you know of mri is but what was the show 20 no 30, 32 percent right? 30 32 percent so 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 it's 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 more it's much more healthy um and, and, and the business that we are doing in, in UK is much more healthy, but it's a tough market. To, to, to dig a little bit deeper in that, there's a question. I don't know whether you you, you, you you published that, but which market did deliver the most growth? You know, was it uh, Germany and Denmark and, and UK much less or as, as much as you can comment on that? Yeah, no, but we can comment on that. Uh, a, a big chunk of the, um, a big chunk of the, of the ARR chart is, is, is uh, uh, driven by, uh, by Germany. Uh, 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 and and um, uh, all markets is actually growing uh, on, on MR. Um, also, uh, um, uh, also UK, uh, but but not not to the same extent as as, uh, as Germany. Um, I think that the, the German market is is uh, is in, increasing, and we see an increase in, in the German market also for, for 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 two other reasons. Number one, we are we're actually selling. Um, so so so. As, as you know, we've developed a, 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 a marketing product uh, that we have been very successful with in the, in the old Oreo, so in the, in, in, in the old um, Oreo countries, UK, Ireland, Denmark, and we've started selling that in, in Germany uh, and uh, in Austria as well uh, with big success, which obviously increases uh, um, our MR down there. 
and and some of the stuff that that we have and I talked about this machine before that we've built in Oreo. So uh, we've actually been able uh, on the technical side to improve the 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 the, the product performance uh, in 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 South, which actually increases conversion rates down there, which also adds um, more orders. So so um, so part of the increase in in South or in Germany is actually coming because of the stuff that happened after the after the uh, after the mergers of some of the stuff that we implemented um, from the north. Then there's a question, how many potential MA opportunities within your scope do you co currently see in the market? A lot. Uh, I, uh, maybe I, 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 no, and, uh, um, uh, I, I can't, you know, I don't want to put a number on no, it. No, 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 no. But, but, but we are, I mean, it is an active part of our strategy. Um, I think I've said this before as well. 12, 15 months ago, we were knocking on people's door. Now people are knocking our door. So it's been come it it it's it's turned in the sense that it's much more a matter of making sure that that we do the right MA transactions uh, um uh, and 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 don't do the ones that we shouldn't do. I mean we have been looking at companies that we've decided not to uh, uh not to not to buy because they were unhealthy. Um so it's a balance, but but we but we, we do see a lot and, and, and we follow it. I mean, this is a this is I mean uh, we spend a significant part of our time on on looking for uh, for MA opportunities. And obviously uh, the, the 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 ones that we find ourselves is 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 typically much more healthy and 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 uh, and and needs more negotiations and all that because it's better companies, but that's that's the one we go after. Yeah, and, 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 and and there's also always a question, you know, it's only half a year ago and maybe it's not uh, that bad, but we always ask uh, companies, you know, do you have the strengths, do you have uh, the focus to, to, to do M&A again uh, that fast after? Uh, do have you built up a model now? Are you actually much more ready to do that when, when, when you, after integrating uh, AppSmart? I think, I think uh, uh, the short answer is yes, we're ready and we're capable. And I think I think one one thing one thing that's that's important to mention here, as, as Jesper also uh, mentioned, is that that now we're in a we're in a situation where the perfect fit or close to the perfect fit or match with Oreo is is critical for us, and and we we managed to do so with AppSmart. Uh, so so a proper uh, due diligence uh, helps us, and 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 we we are well the AppSmart merger showed us that we are capable of doing so. And and uh, and then the success, the post merger success that we also think we delivered is is obvious in the numbers. We are ahead of plan. It's also showing that that we have the capabilities here. But it that's easier to be successfully post merger if if it's the right fit from day one. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we uh, that we evaluate uh, closely uh, whether we should go with a, a certain opportunity or not. Perfect. Is the current cross margin limits what you can expect in the future? Also, is, is there some special uh, speciality in the mix? It has fallen a little bit, but it's still very, very healthy compared to to software as a service uh, above the eighty, and it's of course a very important parameter. Uh, but uh, a, a little bit comment about the gross margin level on, on, on whether this level is what we should expect in the future. Also, yeah, I think uh, what's important to, uh, to to uh, remind ourselves about here is that that the majority of uh, of the of the cost of goods sold for uh, for for Oreo is obviously uh, transaction fees uh, and and as Jesper alluded to uh, we we are now at a size where we are capable of getting better deals uh, so so potentially there will be uh, opportunities for uh, an even increased uh, gross profit or gross profit margin. On the other side, uh, this is also a little bit about uh, accounting principles. So, uh, so we, we we might allocate, com depending on on which uh, product offering we have, we might uh, decide to add more costs to uh, to that line. But uh, in in general, we expect uh, we expect with this level, and uh, and if we uh, if we were to look into uh, to the future, we also expect to be able to improve the the gross profit margin. And then there's a question here: Do you expect any extraordinary costs, you know, below the, the your guidance line? It, it, most of it was transaction uh, with the AppSmart. So if I, I might say, if you don't do a, a merger or acquisition this year, will there be any cost associated to this line? Um, that's a good way of showing it. Uh, if we do, if I mean, it's pretty simple. If we do M and A, 
there will be uh, there, there will be um, uh, extraordinary costs uh, if we don't do anything they will not however there might be failed uh, uh, m a transactions so we might you know hopefully not but if we are you know spending money on on doing m a transactions that actually end up you know failing uh, they will end up at that at that level as well but they will all be uh, as Jesper said transactional uh, or transaction costs so we don't so so all the other stuff uh, we will not put down there perfect uh, how high was the churn in 22 and how many new restaurants did you uh, organically sign up in in 22 um so 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 i think here uh, so the, the 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 way that we look at churn uh uh is is from an mr MR point of view as jesper as jesper talked about we had uh, approximately eight point you said eight point eight percent uh mr churn uh, for 22 which is a little bit on the high side due to 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 close downs in um mainly in in the uk uh and and and, and losing some customers to competitors um in terms of number of restaurants, I mean, this is not uh, in the early days. This was a very important metric for us, but it is actually not even uh, not, not more. We are, we are just below ten thousand restaurants, which we've been actually for some time. So so so, uh, but but the state is getting much more healthy. But it's more important for us, you know, what is driven through the um, uh, the, the restaurants, especially when we are at the size that 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 we have now. Um, so, so we don't have uh, we don't have a logo churn with us uh, for 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 this meeting, uh, but an MR churn, which is is actually the value driving and financial part of this, which was eight point eight percent. And uh, maybe maybe an extra question, and, and, and you don't need to if you. But but you know it, it, when you alluded about your new strategy, you also talked about twenty five thousand restaurants you could, yeah. you could liberate in in the future. So it almost sounds to me like it's no longer a. a a KPI you follow that so no we do we, we do follow it no okay. and, uh, yeah so so and and actually we we, we do still have twenty five thousand uh, so twenty five and twenty five is still is still our KPI uh, I, th I think the way to look at, at number of restaurants needs to be in a little broader in a little yeah. broader sense so that's something you look at every year you know it's it's not something that that so all the other stuff that we're doing all the financial KPIs that we also talk about here, the MR churn and all that is basically on a quarter by quarter basis. And we're, we're going to talk about that basically every quarter, every second half. The other one is more a uh, um, uh, is more a strategic uh, um, KPI that we uh, that we um, that we look at uh, in, in this forum, uh, uh, probably more sporadic, but it's a very important driver for us internally. And obviously, uh, you know, we, we if you want to be number one, we you want to keep on adding restaurants and, and liberate restaurants so 25 and 25 is still on absolutely and then lastly uh i think you had uh, 19 million in capitalized uh, development cost around the level as you had before you were talking about you already have built a big machine uh i'm not talking you to guide in the future on, on this one but maybe more talk about uh, what will the what 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 are you investing in it, things to run smoothly uh, through your system you know uh, mm. or or, I, or do you now have power maybe to start looking at adding, you know, extra areas, you know, for, for, for selling, uh, upselling, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in your development pipeline, whether that now can change a little bit, you know, and, and, and maybe mm -hmm. be more focused on on, on, on on new features or new areas which you could upsell, or yeah. is it still running, uh, every, get everything to run smoothly in, in, in your organization after the, after the merger? Yeah, okay, good question. Um, and and uh, we we haven't spoken a lot about product, uh, and and we we don't do this in, at, at these calls, and 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 we want to you know probably do that next time um, uh, because we do still invest in products, and and uh, and the easy answer is obviously we do both. So we, we it's important that we make sure that the engine that we have uh, keeps running smoothly, and there's and there's a lot going on. Um, uh, that we that we keep investing in improving all the all the time, but we also do add new features both in the existing product and and we are launching that uh, constantly. And then obviously we uh, are investing um, in in our POS solution. Uh, we acquired, as you know, a POS solution from AppSmart, or they they were um, uh, uh, AppSmart uh, had a, a, a POS solution ready uh, that we are investing in and preparing uh, to. Um, to, to be even better. Uh, so we, we do invest in new products and that we'll continue to do that. Um, 
growth marketing, as we talked about, so the marketing product that we had uh, in, in Oreo is something we also invest in um, because we can see that selling that product into a state that we acquire uh, is a very, very strong product to sell. We can see that, especially in AppSmart, and we don't expect that should be any different in other products, or sorry, other companies that we that we acquire. Um, not many have that product at, and are not able to do it at scale that we are, and, and, and it's a pretty powerful tool. And then if I can add, I think it's important to, to the, the at scale, uh, scalability is, is, is critical here. So uh, a lot of the things that, that uh, we're developing our platform might not be visible uh, from day one, but it enables us to, uh, to scale and uh, it, it, right. that's, it supports our m and strategy perfectly. So, so uh, a lot of developing is happening on the product that enable us to, to have the aggressive M and A strategy uh, that we do. Uh, so, so, but new features, obviously, that we have a roadmap uh, packed with new features or proposals. So, that will continue. Perfect. I think that was the last uh, question. Thank you to you, uh, Jesper, and Jesper, uh, and thank you to the audience. May everybody have a nice weekend. The same. Thank you.